two guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. It's a rare Friday scoop session here on Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd. Our friend Darren Doogie Wolfson from the Five Eyewitness News Sports Department. Thank you, thank you. We've got about a 20-minute chunk here, and we're just going to devote it all to Twins Fallout. But I want to start. I'm gonna I'm gonna read something to you guys, make you uncomfortable, and then you guys can react. Starting with Doogie. All right. This has been making the rounds. A couple of our listeners have sent this from a year ago. The twins put together. They worked with some copywriting outlet, and they put together like an over the top kind of corny thank you fans for last year. This is you one sure year it ago. AI. Gonna, was it AI? It could have been. A, it could have been AI. Could have been AI. Yeah. This is from one year ago. Thank you, fans, for believing. Dear fans, this season was different. It started with a promise and a lot of chatter. Trades were made. Trades were questioned. Stars emerged. Vests were worn. Backwards, we clinched. Now the other cleat drops. The drought, 19 years. When faced with the weight of history, did you abandon hope? No. You believed. In every high fly near a foul pole, in every triple-digit heater, in a band of promising rookies who graduated to the show, in all the ups, the downs, and pun incoming curveballs this season through your way, you watched, listened, even traveled cross country to catch your twins. That's what made this season different. Imagine what next season could be. Imagine spring training has already started. Actually, don't imagine, believe. Twins. So that was from October of 2023. It was approximately two weeks later that Derek Falvey went on the record, which was always baffling to me, to say that payroll was being cut and likely cut significantly. And that began the downturn for this entire season. The Comcast fiasco. I'm telling you, blame gets spread all around. But I understand it. Piggybacking off our conversation from Thursday, I get it if Rocco Baldelli gets fired next week. I continue to hear zero chatter on that front. I anticipate some level of change. I just haven't heard that Rocco is going to be fired next week. But Judd, and it it continued last night, right? You know, grabbing defeat from the jaws of victory. Seven or eight times. A 90% win probability going back to that Texas game many weeks ago and thereafter. Seven or eight games where the win probability was 90% and they somehow lost. We saw it again last night. When something like that happens, there has to be a fall guy. And so I would get it. If Rocco Baldelli gets fired, I completely understand it. This is the type of season, this is the type of meltdown that gets a manager fired. I'm just telling you, Judd, I just have not heard that sort of steam. And to me, the blame gets spread all around, but certainly on Rocco. Oh, absolutely. And look, they have no choice now. Like they, they have no choice. They have to do something and you can't, and you can't uh, put out a press release on Tuesday saying David Popkins has been relieved of his duties as the hitting coach, because no one's going to care. This, this crowd, the fan base that's left is mad and they're, Correct. Now, here's the here's the conversation, though, and I've alluded to this previously, but we've seen it again in two of the three games in this series. You're playing the Marlins. Sat by Declan last night, and I spent most of the game raging, not about the Twins, about the Marlins. One of the worst, most inept, bad news, bears, pieces of crap I've seen, and you lost. This team is checked out. This team has checked out. In the most important time of the year, they are mentally gone. You, you know, you can say what you want. Well, they're just not that good. They're just not that good. I mean, Carlos Santana is wandering off of second base on that Jeffers bunt to the point where the first baseman catches the ball. He got the ball. He stopped and looked. And, and the guy at second is there covering the base. And the first baseman, like, stares because he's like, there's no, oh, there is, bang. Carlos Correa doesn't hustle down the line to end the game last night. Carlos Correa gets doubled off. Inexplicably, Santana. no, no, two nights ago oh, on, gotcha. on the fly ball to, to left. This is a this is a series against the Marlins. So we can say what we want about fault, and I agree with you, Dukes. It goes to everybody, but 
when you are this checked out, it has to fall on the manager, who I think is just basically shot every bullet he had to try to get this team back, and they haven't come back. And now it's literally a death march at Target Field. But, but do you think, and this is, I know this is probably rhetorical for this group here, but do you think w- with where this franchise sits right now, two collapses in three years of epic proportions, the, the fans have spoken. I mean, Dukes, I put this out for these guys this morning. Uh, in a, in a, on a Wednesday where a bunch of teams are fighting for playoff spots at home or top seeds, you got teams drawing 50,000, 40,000, Tigers 33,000, Astros 33,000. The White Sox drew more fans than the Twins on Wednesday looking to avoid their 121st loss. Like Based on where this franchise is at and the, the, the public speaking by not showing up to these games, do they have a manager problem? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm, well, I'm not saying that they, they shouldn't make a move there. That. But yeah. That's the oh, thing. Oh, God, yeah. I yeah. mean, look at the TV ratings, too. So it's quantifiable that way as well. Because to me, Corey Provis continues to be as good as it gets. I've got the baseball package. I watch way more games than I should. Corey is top notch. He was so good last night on the Jeffers failed bus. Yeah. Thank you, he Corey him out. Provis. He calls such a wonderful game. Just look at the TV ratings the last few weeks, including this week. And so, yeah, it's wide ranging. That's why, to me, it would be unfortunate if Rocco is the fall guy because it is vast. It extends so far. I just don't – I'm just telling you, I would not fire Rocco because I don't want him to be the guy Would you fire Derek then? Like somebody – like like they have to do something. That's my point. Like if you want to blow them all out, be my guest – but you can't come. You can't say, "Well, we like Rock." I mean, this is that's very polar. Like, we like Rocco, and we still really trust Derek. And you know what? We're gonna fire Pete Mackey. You can't do that. I'm. I'm not saying that I think that Rocco is solely at fault. I'm saying if there is not a head on a platter by Monday or Tuesday, you are. You supposedly tried to right size your business. I can tell you right now, if you don't make a significant change, I can take your business and put it in my trash dumpster for Wednesday pickup if you decide that you are going to polish up the pitching coach job. I This is not a, well, I like this guy and he doesn't t- deserve it. Everyone deserves blame. I could fire everybody. Hell, I could fire his Declan said the poll edge should probably sell the damn team. But at the end of the day, we can't sit here and like we're we're trying to parse apart, well, who deserves this and who deserves that. Somebody has to be offered as the sacrificial lamb for what has become a complete joke in the floor. The Miami Marlins did you. They're awful. They might be, I think they're worse than the White Sox as far as what I saw. Hey, grand solution. Mark Laurie, Alex Rodriguez, Michael Bloomberg. By the twins. There we go. By the way, you keep bringing up hitting coach, Hopkins, pitching coach, Mackey. What what about the bench coach? So Jace Tingler was the manager of the Padres. Look at that collapse from 2021. No, you're right. Then he's here for the twins collapse in 2022. He's seen a lot of collapses. He's still here. I'm not blaming him solely, clearly, but it's just, it's to me, it's actually hilarious that Jace Tingler three out of the last four years, a part of, especially 21 and this year, like historic collapses. That Padres team in 21, I'm telling you, mirrors this Twins team in many ways. Maybe their collapse began a touch sooner, but my God, that's why I get it. I'm telling you, Judd, if we find out on Tuesday or Wednesday that Rocco Beltelli has been relieved of his duties, I'm not going to sit here and say, that's BS. What the heck are they doing? I would get it. I'm just saying, to me, it would be unfortunate if he's the fall guy when we can spread blame all around. Ownership, front office, yes, Rocco, coaches, and certainly a number of players. Mm-hmm. And I tend to agree with Dukes. Like, I, I could see a situation where Rocco saved, where Rocco's job is still remains after this season. But, like, if you're going to blow out the hitting coach and the bench coach or the pitching coach or the strength coach or all these random coaches – then are you still going to elect Rocco to replace them? Like that that's also if you're just going to blow out random other guys like the bench coach and hitting coach, he would who gets, quit then. That's who gets where he say. Would. Exactly. So like so th- at that point if 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 they say come up to Rocco, hey Rocco, we want you to stay but hey, we we need to make some changes on the base coaches and your bench coach. 
then Rock was okay, can I pick them? And then if he's if they obviously say no, then why would I manage? <laughs> why why would I stick around here either? I know Royce threw out the idea that maybe he quits. And I don't I wouldn't blame Rocco at all if he quit. I actually would not blame Rocco Baldelli at all if on Monday he says, you know what? I'm good. I don't want to do this anymore. By the way, he get another I, I job in the near future. May not be sure. immediately. But like if Rocco is gone one way or another next week, he'll work again as a manager. All right. So let's backtrack for it's a second here, though. We blame a lot of folks. That's fine. Mm-hmm. All right. You guys tell me, at least uh, uh, Dukes and Dex, why does Rocco deserve to keep his, his job? Be- because it can't be, well, he's just not to blame. There's a lot of blame to go around. Why does Rocco Baldelli deserve, like, it? the poll ads can't say, well, there's a lot of blame starting with us, so everyone keeps their job. Why does Rocco Baldelli deserve to keep his job? Is it his fault that Manny Margot literally couldn't get a pinch hit? Now, if you want to blame Rocco for continuing to put Manny him. in that situation, I understand it somewhat. And Rocco tried to push a lot of buttons with the bullpen because, to me, a manager, lineup construction, bullpen management, right? In-game strategy, but bullpen management has a lot to do with that. Well, the Twins allowed so many inherited runners to score. So I get it. Maybe Rocco should have left the previous pitcher in a little bit longer. But is it Rocco's fault that Royce Lewis has one home run in the last, what, 40-something games? That he had 15 snap of the fingers? Then he disappears. Jose Miranda disappears. Willie Castro, in many ways, disappears. Is that on Rocco? That Ryan Jeffers couldn't lay down a bunt when he has previously. I get it. You don't think Ryan Jeffers of somebody was going to lay down a bunt, but he has laid down a bunt before. And so is that Rocco's fault that Ryan couldn't execute that bunt last night? I just, I hate the idea of one person because the front office failed miserably going back to the yeah. winter on Kyle Farmer. Mm-hmm. You know, Manny Margot was a failure. Jay Jackson, Josh Stalmick go up and down the list. Then only acquiring Trevor Richards at the trade deadline, you know, trying hard on Michael Kopech, but also knowing deep down the White Sox don't like to make in-division trades. So why did you spend so much time trying to acquire Michael Kopech? There were other avenues to pursue even harder than they did. And by the way, the front office had a little bit more leeway than I think a lot of people realize. It's not like they could have added millions upon millions of dollars on July 30th, but they could have added a little bit more than they did in just Trevor Richards. Kyle Farmer at five something million dollars this year. That was a first guess. Who the heck would have brought back Kyle Farmer in the winter for five million dollars? Just didn't make sense. So I'm telling you, the front office deserves blame. Ownership. You win your first playoff series in 21 years. That's when you add. You don't subtract. Arizona added. And I get it. Arizona was at a lower number. Right. But Arizona spent significant money in the winter after the run they made. That is the path they should have taken. Go pursue another starting pitcher. To think you could have Joe Ryan, Bailey Ober, Pablo Lopez each make 30 something starts. A Chris Paddock was going to pitch 150 something innings this year. Like, no, 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 no. All of that wasn't realistic. So the expectations the front office had in the winter just didn't make. A whole lot of sense. And I'm telling you, we cannot take these players off the hook. And I'll continue to say, Carlos Correa missing two months, I just don't get it. I really don't. Yeah. I don't. Like July 12th to mid-September, I really don't understand it. He should have been back sooner. You know, just on the ownership level, two different paths to go down here. And this is just one person's Twitter account uh, with 5,500 votes on a poll. But I feel like, you know, I've got enough, I think, representation of people who follow me that are Vikings fans, Twins fans, Wolves. Maybe Wild is underrepresented for me, but I put a poll out. So let's start with ownership, public perception, public relations. What do people think about you as the Polad family and do they trust you? Do they believe in you? And I put out a poll this morning or last night. I said, which Minnesota sports ownership group do you trust and believe in the most? Well, 5,500 votes, 86% voted Wilfs and Vikings. 6.3% voted Glenn Taylor 
Lynx and Timberwolves. I think that's gone up because the Wolves were really good. The Lynx are maybe going to win a championship again. Craig Leopold comes in next at 5.9%. The poll ads came in at 1.7% on this poll. And I can confirm two people reached out to me to say they misclicked their answer and they would, they're they wondering if they could, they thought we were voting for the one that you would mistrust the most. So confirm that at least two of the 1.7% would like their vote back. So public approval, public relations, disaster. Go look at any twin social media post. The responses are fire the owners, sell the team, right? What are you going to do about it? Attendance and business. We're going to right size our business, right? Well, you have failed to get 2 million attendance every year going back to 2019. In fact, they've only hit 2 million attendance twice since 2015. Like I said to you to start the show, Dukes, there were more people watching the White Sox the other night, 120 losses, than there were the Twins in the middle of a playoff chase. And then if you want to go like wins and losses, the Twins have only won 90 games twice at Target Field. 2010 and 2019, twice, and only one playoff series win going back 20 years. So my question to the executive suite, do you care? What is your plan? What are we doing here? Like, unpack all of that as an ownership group is my que- is my my plea to them, Doogie. All right, you blow this thing up because you can justify blowing the whole thing up. Who do you hire as the president of operations? And who are you hoping is the next manager? And you look at the landscape of this division for the next couple years. What is your pathway to the playoffs a year from now? Two years from now, when presumably the Royals get better, the Tigers get better, the Guardians, I don't think, are slowing down. Okay, the White Sox dumpster fire. We get that. But how hard will it be? to make the playoffs the next couple of years. I mean, they've got pillar pieces, though. So I, what, my answer to that would be, okay, if you don't think that a team with Royce Lewis, Carlos Correa, Pablo well, Lopez, Joe Ryan coming back. How many games you, is Carlos then, Correa playing next year? How then many start games trade, is Byron Then, then playing sell next off, year? I guess. How many games is Royce Lewis playing next year? Then sell off. Okay. Then, then go full rebuild with your second-ranked prospect uh, collection. That's uh, If you don't think you can put together enough money in free agency – enough capital in your again second ranked farm system you've mm-hmm. got enough you've got enough ammunition if you want to add to this team you that's the go idea add to this team what yeah. is the yeah, what they is should the, have added a corbin burns last week well that type here, of move here's the question then off, off of this what is the point and, and I, I know he's got no trade protection i'm sure he, he would waive it for the right move what is the point in keeping carlos like, like if we feel like, okay, you well, know, he's your, because he's your best player. I mean, that's the, the point. point but I'm saying he's also million a commodity then per year to trade. Could you go back and say, did it make sense to invest that sort of money in him to begin with? And I mean, he's it, far yeah, from it, the problem. Don't get me wrong. His numbers. No, right. He's the MVP this year. He's the, he is it. your, he is your best player. Just yeah, full stop period. Player. Absolutely. Yeah. is your best player. He should not have missed two months in my mind, but yes, Absolutely their best player, but I'm just saying, go back to them investing $32 million right. a year in him. Right. How do Is you get, here's w- one more question on this. I know you got to go dudes, but if from a, you want to right size your business, right? Well, the way that you right size your business, it, you can talk about cut, you can cut and cut and cut to right size your business. Ideally you would go from, I don't know, having 1.8 million fans to 2.5 million fans, right? How do you add a half a million more butts and seats next year? Well, you're not going to cut your way to that. You need to show fans you are aggressive. You want to win. You have standards. And they showed fans the opposite starting a year ago for the subsequent 12 months. You're not going to, how are you going to get 2 million people to show up if, if you aren't showing the people, at least in some sort of public relations form, that you want to put a championship caliber team out there? I get it. And I'm telling you, Judd, I don't think we can undersell the Comcast angle. I just know so many people no. that once the twins were lost off Comcast, they tuned out. So that's when apathy set in. So that's yeah. fine that there were some passionate fans at the ballpark last night going back and forth. Some saying fire Rocco, some saying, hey, it's time for new owners. That's right. fine. I know a portion of the fan base that completely tuned out middle of the summer. When they were playing well. That's mm-hmm. the other thing. We we forget that. They were red hot. They went, you know, on May 1st until 
August like third, they were out of sight, out of mind on easily the biggest cable carrier in town with because the best record know, in the American League over that stretch from about and you might say Doogie, you August might say, third. well, well, yeah. you know what? Okay, but but you know, young people don't watch Com- Comcast, and you're right about that with no streaming option. Like that's the thing is, and unfortunately, part of the I will say this: the poll ads get a lifetime achievement award for being some of the most incompetent handlers of media companies of all time. I mean, Victory Sports was also a disaster. You're in the Metrodome. You decide we're gonna we're gonna build more uh, by creating our own network while you're in St. Paul trying to get a stadium. The public said, hold on a second here. You want us to build a stadium, but we can't watch your games? The legislator said, why would we approve a stadium if you guys just pulled your games up? I mean, the level of incompetence, the level of incompetence from thinking that you could play a Sonny and Cher song into a Twins game. Like, there's some, their their incompetence on media runs far worse than their incompetence on baseball. And right now, their incompetence on baseball is high. They, I, I mean, at the end of the day, if they're going to keep the team... They need some people who tell them the truth. Move aside. Let us do an audit. Like, ideally, what you do is if you're going to keep Falvey, you audit what he does. So on game day, I have a manager with autonomy who can now go in the dugout and make decisions, right? Like Derek Falvey and his minions, I don't know how big that that uh, family is, but Derek Falvey and his minions there's are literally yeah. are literally trying it's to tell the manager what to do. I'm going to tell you right now, he's a failure at that. He's built a nice prospect pool. He gets credit for some things. I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't. But if he's going to be kept, I want a full audit of his day on game day. And I want him sitting in his office at 2.30, nowhere near a meeting room, telling the manager what to do. Do Hey, Dukes, final word, because we know enough. you got to go. Final word, Dukes. Well, I mean, I appreciate us spending 20 minutes on this, 25 minutes plus. I mean, this is still very much on my radar. So even though I'm suggesting I've not heard Rocco is going to be fired steam, trust me, it's what I'm working on more than anything right now. And hey, I get it. I'm excited for Sunday. It goes back to what we discussed on Thursday. Ivan Pace Jr. is the one injury concern. Addison back. Dallas Turner back. Garrett Bradbury, there was nothing really to worry about. There, Sam Darnold, certainly nothing really long-term to worry about. But, yeah, it's all about the Twins. I'll be over at Target Field pregame. I can't wait to take the temperature of the clubhouse at 3 o'clock. But, yeah, I'm on my way over to Mayo Clinic Square. Link's son, game one on Sunday. This will be a heck of a series. The two best defensive teams in the WNBA. They played three times in the regular season. Three close contests. So, this series may go the distance, go five games. So the Lynx having home court advantage is a big deal. On the Wolves quickly, Rudy Gobert extension, both sides still motivated to get something done. I don't know if like the start of the season or even the start of training camp next week is like any sort of hardcore deadline, but both sides still interested in working out an extension and a teaser for later on. But let's just say like three years ago this week, Wolves Human Resources was busy investigating the Gerson Rosas situation it's not quite to that level not even close to that level but let's just say wolves hr wow. is busy once again heading into training camp next week. oh my gosh wow well there he is darren doogie wolfson five eyewitness news sports department a scoop session here all right dukes enjoy all right, your weekend we'll talk Absolutely. next week we'll talk soon see ya all right, Minnesota sports with Mackie and Judd. We will do, I guess, for the Twin Show. I mean, this will, and people might be consuming this on the Twin Show podcast feed. Uh, but well, let's let the weekend play out, and then we can decide how we want to handle the the aftermath. But there will be plenty of Twin Show content starting in a couple of days here as we try to parse this all apart going into the off season. Yeah, and I, I would also, I'd, I'd stick around. I'm, I, I have, I'm fine saying this. Uh, it, they're already they're building contingency plans for exit interview and strategy and stuff. So like, if that happens, there'll be news this weekend, this weekend potentially. If there's okay. news this weekend, I will I will be able to pump out some episodes and, and keep you guys posted. But yes, over the next few days, we'll we'll monitor. Keep your schedules clear Monday and Tuesday. That's what I would Monday is going to be nuts here in Minnesota. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going to have but the Polacks haven't Packers, always. Wolves, the Polacks have yeah. not 
always pulled the trigger immediately. I want to say yeah. they pulled it a couple of days after the fact, so I wouldn't be surprised. I'm, I'm going to be on high personal alert from Monday through w Wednesday. Me and Stella are going to be really on high alert. Yeah. All right, boys. She's so, yeah. She's very upset <laughs> about the twins, too. Go ahead. You, 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 you. She's very upset about you the twins. Stella's not, Stella's not happy. She's been gambling on the twins left and right. I told her not to. Damn dog. <laughs>